Right, because let me tell you, those two shootings that we know about, right. there was like half a dozen more that no one ever knows about. Right. Like I've heard all types of stories. Like, yeah, Pac was in the studio and some dudes came in and started shooting at him and he's like chasing after him. Like, right. like he was he was in these types of situations a lot. Right. So he gets shot. Everyone's like, okay, he's going to pull through. He's going to pull through. He's going to pull through. And then we all get the news that he died. Right. When that hits you, what'd you think? Bro, it's similar to like when my father died, like I didn't feel nothing. You know, I was in jail when my dad died. I was a youngster. I was 16. I was in jail for some bullshit back then. And, you know, Pac's death to me is still, for me, death doesn't sink in until I see the body in the casket. That's just how it's been. Like when my family members died, like my mom passed away, I felt that because I watched her sink. She had cancer yeah. and I watched her deteriorate and I watched it. So I knew it was coming. So the day she died, all of that that I had seen was like, it was real. But on something like Pac, I hadn't talked to him in a week. I didn't see his body at no funeral. I damn near, some of my mind is, I know he ain't here, but it was so many people. Do you know how many people get in my DM, hey, tell the truth, is Pac still alive? Like they <laughs> still, they, hey, I mean, cause I know you know, if anybody would know it, it'd be you. Is he still alive? And it's crazy cause, I never saw, I didn't go to the hospital. All I've seen was the pictures on the internet with his chest split up. Which is, you know? by the way, a real picture. Yeah. I, yeah. I interviewed Chris Carroll, right. you know, from Las Vegas PD, the first responder. He right. said that's actually a real well, picture. Well, I, I know it's a real picture because I know his body. I done been around this nigga. I know, I, know, I know this guy. You know what I mean? And then I, you know, spoke with his mom afterwards and other family members yeah. afterwards and the outlaws afterwards. So, I mean, I never believed that, oh, this is still alive and blood. For one, people just, I said, let me tell you something about Tupac. He is not that in control of himself where he could be <laughs> somewhere chilling and just staying out the way because he faked his death. No, yeah. no way. He, he don't possess that. Not at all. Yeah. So, but for me, it, it's crazy, Vlad, because I listen to the music, bro. Like, I even got the boy tatted on my, on my body. I built a bike. Uh, in in uh in his remembrance, a clean ass Harley. I don't know, like I was mad, but it I, it seemed like I was more mad at myself that my career had not gotten me to where I could have been closer to him in his ascent from dear mama to rider. You know what I mean? Because I gave him a lot of game. I, I taught him a lot of shit that he learned about Oakland and different shit. Pac was a good study. He 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 learned a lot of shit fast and quick. But I always felt like I've been in the street a long time. And I, I have like a spider sense that tingles when shit is about to pop. Now, am I sitting here saying Pac would be alive if I was there? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying I kind of feel like I failed him by not at least being around just to help kind of navigate him through some of the shit that I know he didn't really see. He couldn't see. Because Pac wasn't no from the game. He wasn't no, no dope dealer street. You know what I mean? He wasn't no square. But I'm saying it was certain shit that I know he couldn't see. And in the street, once you lose the angles, when once you can't see the angles, that's when it get ugly. You know, I remember uh, watching the, the Suge documentary, uh, American Nightmare, I think. After he got after he got locked up, right? And Shook said as they're walking out, and he was like, you know, after the fight in the MJ as well, you know, you you hot, you hot in the music, but you know now now you're gonna be hot in the street. So Shook already knew, right? I mean, Shook knew Keefe D, right? They grew up together, right? He knew who Orlando was, right? He knew who they were stomping out and why they were stomping him out, right? And Shook, then, Shook understand the, the grand scheme of things, and he didn't inform the guy. I think Suge just had a brand new BMW and he felt like he had 10 cars behind him. And, and, and was, some of those he, guys were armed, like Buntry and them were right. armed. They they shot at Keefe's car and, and everything else like that. Right. Yeah. Um, but when someone just pulls up on you and they catch you with your pants down, essentially, yeah, like they, you, they you're, you're not armed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and they're and actually- you can be armed. They, they, no, there actually was guns in that car. Right. Matter, matter of fact- I, I remember, uh, what's his name? Reggie Wright said that there there was guns in that car. Right. The gun was in the stash box. 
still in the stash box later. Oh, so there actually was a gun in that car? There's two guns in the, in the stash box. In that BMW? Yeah. Did the police find it? No. You have to know how to open the stash box up the ghetto. Oh, wow. Oh. Okay, so Suge and Pac had a couple guns in that stash box. Suge! Sure. Well, you can't, you know, in a split Man, let's second. get off first, bro. I, yeah. We, we, talk to, we talk about this shit all the time. Everybody, are you strapped? Yeah, I'm strapped. Man, for a motherfucker, get off, whip out on you first. Doesn't that matter. ain't gonna do nothing, bro. Like, and once again, back to Suge. Dude, he was on a high. He was killing shit. Just, some, just, just think back. Let's go off of the, sh the night of the shooting. Let's go off of the 662 sh to just being Suge with all the shit that Death Row was killing. They was stomping shit out, dude. They was, I mean, they had the biggest records. I mean, D Dog Pound, Snoop, Rage, I mean, Dre. Like, you gotta imagine Suge's mind state is not like some gonna pull up and try to shoot us. He probably not thinking that, like, he probably more like, ain't nobody finna f with me or my n That's probably how he was feeling. Yeah. And had good reason to be feeling like that. I mean, they was killing shit. Cause if not, if he, if he is the that's on the, the other side of that, like thinking sharp, like then it kind of takes away from the persona that they was pushing. The persona was like, nigga, around this motherfucker. Like, we ain't large and, and you trying to, like the records say, we ain't hard to find. Like, we not large and, and hiding out. We not yeah. large and, oh, and traveling yeah. underground. Like, yeah. we out here fucking with it. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking, yeah, like you, the name you of me? that song, We Ain't Hard to Find. Yeah. Was ultimately Tupac's demise. Yeah, he like was, I he mean, was easy to find in a, in a situation where he should have been hard to find. Right, but like I was yeah. saying, like when you, when you big versus small, and what I mean is, Tupac moving, it's gonna be a, a crowd. Any star moving, it's gonna be a crowd. Where you got the little n the Orlando, he can move. Ain't nobody gonna see him. Yeah, ain't nobody gonna see him. He ain't moving in his neighborhood. I'm sure if he moving through neighborhoods in L.A. and some n be like, oh, that's so and so. But if he moving through Vegas, he's small. He, they really had action at trying to make this happen even later on at 662. Because you're still small. We're, it's, crowd, it's crowds of people. So that's what happens sometimes, man. When, you, when you're huge, you got to move a certain type of way. But like I said, them niggas was, them niggas was up. And they was feeling good. And you got, I got my niggas behind me. They strapped. We don't need no guns up here. Because we don't need, you know, no trouble. My niggas guns. We them I, I doubt they was like, we riding down the street. But Pac had a look on his face in that picture, my name, that didn't look like, oh, I feel like that look on his face to me, bro, says a whole lot of shit. If you know a person, I know this guy. It's people who don't know him and you can look at him and, you know, he, he was connected like that. And when I sit back and tell you, like, I wish I could have been around him to stop certain shit. Dude, I'll be honest with you. Now that I'm talking about it and going back there, because I haven't been here in a long time. He kind of, he started kind of moving like he knew his hand was short and he was just going to ride that motherfucker till it fizzled out. Like he was saying it and he was kind of moving like that. You know what I mean? Like he was moving like, hey, this shit could end at any time. You could hear it in some of the music. So I don't, I mean, I, you, it's always you can be like if it went this way it could go another way but I mean the impact my had while he was here how people choose to refer to it I mean hands down one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life of meeting a dude fucking with him and enjoying watching him become all he became now to me and this is just my the way I feel because like I say I come from the street and I done lost a lot of homies to me when you die is you lose. Like, I'd rather be broke on the sidewalk asking for change than be dead because you got action. That's just the way I think about it. But they have some people who be like, I'd rather be dead than be broke and ask for change. So to me, like, the, the perfect situation would be for Nick, him to be able to live. He didn't get to use, he didn't get to enjoy none of the fruits of the shit that we speaking on because yeah. he was busy working. That's a workaholic, bro.